Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Saturday, July 31st, 2021. Thank you so much for spending this time together with me in God's word, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Today, we remember Joseph of Arimathea. This Joseph, mentioned in all four Gospels, came from a small village called Arimathea in the hill country of Judea. He was a respected member of the Sanhedrin, the Jewish religious council in Jerusalem. He was presumably wealthy since he owned his own unused tomb in a garden not far from the site of Jesus' crucifixion. Joseph, a man waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went to Pontius Pilate after the death of Jesus and asked for Jesus' body. Along with Nicodemus, Joseph removed the body and placed it in the tomb. Their public devotion contrasted greatly to the fearfulness of the disciples who had abandoned Jesus. Our psalm for today is the final portion of Psalm 80. Return, God of armies, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine, the root your right hand planted, the sun that you made strong for yourself. It was cut down and burned. They perish at the rebuke of your countenance. Let your hand be with the man at your right hand, with the son of man you have made strong for yourself. Then we will not turn away from you. Revive us and we will call on your name. Restore us, Lord God of armies. Make your face shine on us so that we may be saved. The Lord told Saul that he had rejected Saul as king and had chosen another person to be king in Saul's place. Today we learn who that other person was as Samuel anoints David as the next king over Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, how long are you going to mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, because I have selected for myself a king from his sons. Samuel asked, how can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. The Lord answered, take a young cow with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will let you know what you are to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate to you. Samuel did what the Lord directed and went to Bethlehem. When the elders of the town met him, they trembled and asked, Do you come in peace? In peace, he replied. I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and said, Certainly the Lord's anointed one is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or his stature, because I have rejected him. Humans do not see what the Lord sees, for humans see what is visible, but the Lord sees the heart. Jesse called Abinadab and presented him to Samuel. The Lord hasn't chosen this one either, Samuel said. Then Jesse presented Shammah, but Samuel said, the Lord hasn't chosen this one either. After Jesse presented seven of his sons to him, Samuel told Jesse, the Lord hasn't chosen any of these. Samuel asked him, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, he answered, but right now he's tending the sheep. Samuel told Jesse, send for him. We won't sit down to eat until he gets here. So Jesse sent for him. He had beautiful eyes and a healthy, handsome appearance. Then the Lord said, anoint him, for he is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came powerfully on David from that day forward. Then Samuel set out and went to Ramah. Now the spirit of the Lord had left Saul, and an evil spirit sent from the Lord began to torment him. So Saul's servants said to him, you see that an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord command your servants here in your presence to look for someone who knows how to play the lyre. Whenever the evil spirit from God comes on you, that person can play the lyre, and you will feel better. 
Then Saul commanded his servants, find me someone who plays well and bring him to me. One of the young men answered, I have seen the son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the lyre. He is also a valiant man, a warrior, eloquent, handsome, and the Lord is with him. Then Saul dispatched messengers to Jesse and said, send me your son David, who is with the sheep. So Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a wineskin, and one young goat, and sent them by his son David to Saul. When David came to Saul and entered his service, Saul loved him very much, and David became his armor bearer. Then Saul sent word to Jesse, let David remain in my service, for he has found favor with me. Whenever the spirit from God came on Saul, David would pick up his lyre and play, and Saul would then be relieved, feel better, and the evil spirit would leave him. As Paul remains in prison in Caesarea, King Agrippa and his wife Bernice come to visit Festus. King Agrippa and Bernice would like to hear about Paul's case, and so Festus is going to give them the opportunity to hear from Paul. Several days later, King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea and paid a call, courtesy call on Festus. Since they were staying there several days, Festus presented Paul's case to the king, saying, There's a man who was left as a prisoner by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews presented their case and asked that he be condemned. I answered them that it is not the Roman custom to give someone up before the accused faces the accusers and has an opportunity for a defense against the charges. So when they had assembled here, I did not delay. The next day, I took my seat at the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. The accusers stood up and brought no charge against him of the evils I was suspecting, I was expecting. Instead, they had some disagreements with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus, a dead man Paul claimed to be alive. Since I was at a loss in a dispute over such things, I asked him if he wanted to go to Jerusalem and be tried there regarding these matters. But when Paul appealed to be held for trial by the emperor, I ordered him to be kept in custody until I could send him to Caesar. Agrippa said to Festus, I would like to hear the man myself. Tomorrow you will hear him, he replied. So the next day, Agrippa and Bernice came with great pomp and entered the auditorium with the military commanders and prominent men of the city. When Festus gave the command, Paul was brought in. Then Festus said, King Agrippa and all men present with us, you see this man. The whole Jewish community has appealed to me concerning him, both in Jerusalem and here, shouting that he should not live any longer. I found that he had not done anything deserving of death, but when he himself appealed to the emperor, I decided to send him. I have nothing definite to write to my Lord about him. Therefore, I have brought him before all of you, and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that after this examination is over, I may have something to write. For it seems unreasonable to me to send a prisoner without indicating the charges against him. Our writing for today comes from Martin Luther. A preface for all good hymnals. Dame Music Speaks. Of all the joys upon this earth, none has for men a greater worth than what I give with my ringing and with voices sweetly singing. There cannot be an evil mood where there are singing fellows good. There is no envy, hate, or ire. Gone are through me all sorrows dire. Greed, care, and lonely heaviness, no more do they the heart oppress. Each man can in his mirth be free, since such a joy no sin can be. But God in me more pleasure finds than in all joys of earthly minds. Through my bright power, the devil shirks his sinful, murderous, evil works. Of this King David's deeds do tell, who pacified King Saul so well by sweetly playing on the lyre, and thus escaped his murderous ire. For truth divine and God's own read, the, humble, the heart of humble faith shall lead. Such did Elisha once propound when harping he the spirit found. The best time of the year is mine when all the birds are singing fine. Heaven and earth, their voices fill with right good song and tuneful trill. 
And queen of all the nightingale, men's hearts will merrily regale with music so charmingly gay, for which be thanks to her for a. But thanks be first to God, our Lord, who created her by his word to be his own beloved songstress and of musica a mistress. For our dear Lord, she sings her song in praise of him the whole day long. To him I give my melody and thanks in all eternity. Our hymn is a, the first stanza of the hymn, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you. Ye dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor, each piece put on with prayer. Where duty calls or danger, be never wanting there. And we pray. Merciful God, your servant Joseph of Arimathea prepared the body of our Lord and Savior for burial, burial with reverence and godly fear and laid him in his own tomb. As we follow the example of Joseph, grant to us, your faithful people, that same grace and courage to love and serve Jesus with sincere devotion all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you again for spending this time together with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.